We have finished porting our GT40 heads. Now we're ready for the Trick Flow Spring Kit to amp this thing up just a little bit. Welcome to another episode of Alpine Garage. We are putting in uh, Trick Flow Springs. This kit is made for GT40 heads where you're not going to be cutting the spring seat to put in like a double spring. This one is a beefier spring than stock and it, it's not necessarily a true double spring but you can see that it's a spring inside of maybe like a, a flat spring steel spring that's on the inside there. So it, it, it is almost like a double spring. It's not a true double spring. It gives you more than a stock spring will give you, uh, but probably less than a true double spring if you were gonna cut the seats. We're gonna be doing this plain and simple because I wanted to port these heads to see what kind of power we can get out of them. And then at some point, I'll upgrade the heads altogether to an aluminum head. Don't want to put a ton of money into these heads for that reason. Now that we have lapped these valves, and I didn't do a video on the valve lapping, but it's, but it's a very easy process. I just went and got this valve lapping compound from Permatex. Put it on three parts of the valve, slid it in there, and then used a valve lapping tool like this and then just did like a one, two, three, spin a quarter, one, two, three, spin a quarter, one, two, three, and then picked it up just a little bit and then put it back down to kind of get it to re-engage the grit, and then one, two, three, spin it a quarter, and it took a while. Anyway, I didn't want to film that, so that's where I'm at. Then I went ahead and just cleaned them up with some acetone to get all the grit off of them, dipped them in a little bit of oil slid them down in now when you're cleaning your heads one of the things I wanted to tell you about is I've tried all kinds of solvents uh, on these heads to clean the old oil out of it that baked in like 160 to 200 thousand mile oil what actually worked was wheel and tire cleaner wheel and tire cleaner literally ate all of it off whereas my solvent in my parts cleaner didn't even touch it. So try this, this stuff works really well. So now that we've got the valves in there, I've got a, a board here that I'm gonna use to kind of hold the valves in. Then I'm gonna go flip this head over. I've got some risers underneath it, which are basically just pieces of one by one. All right, and that's how I'm gonna do this. The spring kit comes with very easy instructions. Now I'm using the stock valves in this, so just do keep that in mind. You've got your exhaust retainers in a clear bag. You've got the intake retainers in a blue bag. You've got valve seals. Keepers. And springs. Now on top of that you also have shims. And then you have your 1.8 inch height gauge. It's just a little piece of rolled steel here that they have that's 1.0 inches. And it's really easy. You slide your shims on. Put your retainer on, check your height. Super easy, you can pull shims out as you go. This whole process didn't take me very much time. And based on the, I already did one head to kind of gauge it. What I realized was that I didn't need any extra shims on the exhaust, I need one extra shim on every intake and it was consistent across the board. That said, we're starting out with exhaust probably. Starting out with exhaust, I have one extra shim on the exhaust, on the intake side. And as you can notice, it says this side up. I don't know if you can see it or not. This side up right there. So you're gonna put that side up, make it real super easy. And then I have an exhaust, so no shim, no extra shims. And then I have an intake. So I'm gonna put one extra shim. And then just keep going down the line like that. And this is how I'm gonna start it, just to kind of speed up the process a little bit. So now I'm gonna take, remember that your exhaust is in the clear bag. So since I'm starting with exhaust, I'm gonna go ahead and slide on an exhaust. It comes with keepers. So I'm gonna grab a couple of keepers here. Slide them in. I'm gonna slide the hat in, give it a pull. Sometimes they pop, but sometimes they don't. And then I'm gonna take our 1.8 inch and it is solid in there, nice and tight right there. There's no movement in it, so that's perfect. So that valve is the proper height. Now, let's go to the blue bag, which is the intake. I'm gonna pull an intake 
retainer, slide it in, get a couple of keepers, slide those on, lock them in, Let's see if I can get the pop, okay well it didn't pop but see now on this one I have got it's a little tight but not super tight in fact if I really wanted to jam it in there I probably could in fact I did there you go so I'm gonna leave that the way that it is because I know when the spring puts pressure on this retainer it's going to give it just a little bit more height than I can do with my hand so I'm gonna leave that the way it is so, so far everything is true all right now we've checked all the heights we're within spec so we're just gonna pop every one of these down the retainers are different for intake and exhaust so don't mix them up because you will change the spring heights the set spring heights if you do so then you're gonna take your spring now if you notice that in this kit the spring has uh, an inside spring steel spring and it stops three quarters of the way to the top it goes all the way down to the bottom here so at this point this is where your retainer goes because if you put the retainer on the other side i'll show you your retainer here the retainer will not sit flat so it doesn't say this in the instructions so you need to put it on the opposite side and it sits flat this is the base right here so we're going to go ahead and stick that on our valve. Then we're going to get, you can have a bunch of different types of uh, spring compressors. I've got just the basic standard spring compressor here. And this one works just fine. I got this, I think, at O'Reilly's or something. So just like that, it'll lock in. And then the opposite side will also clear the inside spring. And then just a little bit of tension on it. We'll get it locked in there and then compress the spring. Now, just because I don't want to lose a finger, I will use a glove on this halfway through. I'll check to make sure nothing's slipping. It looks good. Give it one, two, three more. That'll be enough. Slide this on. I'm going to put one of the keepers in one side. And then I'm going to move the spring up to get it in, set in place. Get that keeper set in place. They like to be, they want to fall, there we go. Ah, there we go. Well, they want to fall all the way to the bottom there. And then I'm going to slide the other keeper in. And with just a little bit of play, I'm just going to play with it. It'll slide into place just like that. So that slid right in. Now I'm going to pull it all the way up to hold the keepers in place. And then, take the tension off. And just like that, we have a spring set in the spring perch and we're gonna do the same thing on the other seven. As you can see, this goes pretty fast once you get used to it, and uh, we're just gonna knock it out. All right, and just like that, we've got all 16 valves in. Uh, we've got all 16 springs in as well. Uh, we've ported the heads. We have lapped the valves. Now we're ready to put them on a 347. That's a wrap from Alpine Garage. Thanks for hanging out with us on this build. Next, we're going to be mounting the heads and cleaning and porting the GT40 intake to get a little bit more airflow for this 347.